Hey guys, welcome to Poor Man Mods. Today is finally the day I get to install this, the Haltech Elite 2000 EC on my Supra. I have an appointment next week at Haltech in Kentucky. It's over 10 hours away. They're going to tune the car and make it run awesome. So it's time to install this ECU. I'm going to rip out what's in the car, switch over to my LS coils, and trailer the Supra down there, and hopefully it's going to be running like a champ. So I'm going to be doing a couple videos for this whole adventure with Haltech. Um, this one today, I'm probably just going to install the ECU physically, and the next video I'll probably do the tuning with the computer and get the base map on there. And there's going to be a bunch of videos in this series, um, but today we're going to rip out what's in the car now and get this bad boy installed. Let's get to it. Alright, let's rip out this uh, ready e-manage. Thank you, Tony. What are you trying to do? I bet you can't find the horn. It's a toggle switch. <laughs> Hashtag poor man mods. Bye bye, Grady. And we also get to ditch the factory ECU. How exciting is that? This rat's nest can get out of here too. Okay, so just like the harness I pulled out, this is our boom slang harness. This is what Haltech sent me to use with their ECU. It's gonna plug right into the factory engine harness that's tucked back in that glow box area. And uh, yeah, it's a whole lot simpler than what I just pulled out. Um, kinda hard to see back in there, but just gonna plug it into the factory harness. Super easy. So Go can, home. Can you start the super right now? Absolutely not. Uh, Boom! It's connected! Boom, bitch! Alright, here's the really hard part, folks. Hold on to your butts. I have to plug in the Haltech. It's two connectors. They're different sizes. I wonder where they could possibly plug in. Ooh! And there we go. Now we just have to... Connect this and this, and uh, run a boost line to the ECU. Now what we're gonna try to do today is run this wire for the electronic boost solenoid that we have for this, and also the hose for the internal map sensor. This has an internal map sensor right here. Here's the port. It's good for like 29 pounds of boost, I believe. So we're gonna remove the map sensor in the engine bay that I had for the Grady E-Manage and plug this hose into the map sensor. And now it's actually gonna be really tricky to do this because I don't have a lot of room going through this hole in the firewall here because all the wiring and crap going through it. So I have to <laughs> run this hose, which I seriously don't know if there's gonna be enough room. I have to run this hose and this wire through it. I'm gonna use the wire from the Gretty e Manage map sensor as a pull string to pull these through the hole, but I'm really iffy if it's gonna make it, so uh, wish me luck. Okay, so here's the Grady E-Manage wire. I've got it untangled and everything. So first, how should I do this? Let's try to get, this is probably most important, because if I really needed to, I guess I could tap this into my boost gauge on the other side. Let's see if we can get this through the freaking thing. Whew. I'm really skeptical if there's that much room in there, but we'll see. Maybe I'll actually uh, spray some WD-40 on here and make it a little bit smoother. I'll cut this off too. Just gotta make this as smooth and as slippery as possible so it can go through. All right, let's see if it'll pull. Oh wow, she came through. Sweet. It actually came through absolutely no problem. So now that this is on the other side of the firewall, 
I'm gonna piggyback onto this with the boost hose, and see if I can get that through too. When you do this, whether you're doing this in a building or a house or a car, whatever kind of cable you're running, if you're doing this method, you really wanna make sure this tape is as tight as possible and try to start at the front and just kind of make it a cone shape. That way it goes as smoothly as possible. Um, you don't want this to rip away from this. Um, otherwise, if you get it halfway through your wall or whatever and it breaks away, you're gonna have a bad day. Um, it's happened to me many, many a time. So we're gonna spray this again with W. See if we can pull it through. Come on, baby. Yes, we got it. Oh my God, you have no idea how happy I am. I really thought this was gonna be an absolute nightmare. Yes. Oh, it's literally the same exact length as the E-Manage. It just might reach. Yes. <laughs> it's a little bit short. I'll probably extend it later, but uh, it is connected. <laughs> okay, now we can assemble our boost controller. The manual that comes with this shows that there's three different setups for this. One is an internal wastegate, which I don't have. Then there's an external wastegate low boost and an external wastegate high boost. Um, I'm gonna assume I'm the high boost one because I'm running between 20 and 30 pounds of boost. So uh, it says for that, um, it says in the center here, number three is gonna vent to air filter, which I don't have. It definitely did not come with an air filter, um, but we're gonna put barbs on the ones on the side here. So let's go ahead and do that. these fittings down get them good and tight so on this setup for me port number two is gonna go to the wastegate and port number one is gonna go to the turbo and while we're at it we'll install the mounting bracket here not sure where exactly it will mount but you put this bracket with the rubber grommet on the back side of here and it comes with two bolts that thread into it So then when you bolt this to the car, this little rubber grommet will keep it nice and isolated and uh, reduce vibrations on it to make it last longer. All right, we'll remove my $30 eBay boost controller here. Cut this to the right length. Let's strip these wires. What's cool about this is, you know, you're only attaching two wires, but it's non-polar. So it doesn't matter which wire from the solenoid goes to the wire on the harness, you can't mess it up. We can plug it in, plug it in. All right guys, so pretty much everything is wired up except for one more thing. Got the boost controller wired up, the harness is in. It's really not that difficult. It's so easy, but there's one more thing right here. And that is the ground wire for the ECU. Now, this is going to be really difficult for me to show you. I mean, it's just a ground wire. You just have to ground it somewhere. So I'm not going to film myself installing this just because it's it's easy. Like, if you're doing this to your car, you should be able to know how to do it. But, uh, yeah, I'm just going to find a bolt back here and hook it up to, and I'm not going to be able to get the camera. So that's why I'm not going to show you. It's not that big of a deal. And then uh, once this is bolted down, we'll be ready to go to the software. But that will be another video. All right, so here's inside of my disgusting glove box. This is the original engine harness that plugs in to the Haltech unit. And I ran my ground wire right up here, grounded it to that stud right there. Super easy. So 
that's my setup for right now. I don't have the Haltech secured in the glove box. Um, I'll do that probably after they tune it, once everything's done, but I'll probably either use bolts or maybe Velcro. But uh, yeah, that's what we have going on for right now. So this concludes the hardware section. All right, guys, so there you go. I got my Haltech Elite 2000 installed on my 1J Supra. Really easy. Um, like I said, I got their plug and play harness. This is a boom slang harness. It's not a Haltech one. They don't make one for this 1JZ in particular. This is the Soar 1JZ, but they do have a plug and play harness for the Supra 1JZ, I believe. So pretty easy. Just plug in the harness and then connect the ground, run the map uh, sensor hose, and then I hooked up the boost controller solenoid. So pretty simple so far for hardware. So I'm gonna end this video here. Hopefully you learned something. Hope you enjoyed it. Thanks again for Haltech for helping me out with this. It wouldn't be possible without them. And I'll see you guys next time in the next video where we go over the software. So if you're interested in that, stay tuned.